All right, for our first question, let's have a look at a specimen paper that CAIE had actually released for the 2022 new syllabus. You can actually download this paper from their website. You will need to look at question 12. Under this question, you have a star that has a luminosity that is known to be 4.8 times 10 power 29 watts. A scientist observing this star finds that the radium flux intensity of light received on Earth from the star is 2.6 nanowatts per meter square. For part one, name the term used to describe an astronomical object that has a known luminosity. So the keyword here is that that object must have a known luminosity. From what we discussed earlier, this is actually your standard candle. And then if you move on to part two, determine the distance of the star from the Earth. So if you're talking about distance of the star from your point of measurement, which is your Earth right now, you will actually have to use your radium flux intensity equation, which is F equals to luminosity divided by your area, 4 pi d squared. So we know that your luminosity is this value, and then your radium flux intensity is this value over here. Bear in mind that your radium flux intensity is actually coated in nanowatts per meter square. You will actually need to change out the nanometer later on. So if you now put the values into your equation, radium flux intensity is 2.6 times 10 power minus 9. You change out the nano, and then other that, your luminosity is 4.8 times 10 power 29. And then divide it by 4 pi d squared. The d here is the distance between the star and the Earth. Eventually, you will be able to find the answer as 3.83 times 10 power 18 meter. Okay. Then if you move on to part B, the sun has a surface temperature of 5,800 Kelvin. The wavelength lambda max of light for which the maximum rate of emission occurs from the sun is 500 nanometer. The scientists observing the star in A finds that the wavelength for which the maximum rate of emission occurs from the star is 430 nanometer. In part 1, show that the surface temperature of the star in A is approximately 6,700 Kelvin. Explain your reasoning. Now, if you were to look back at the question, what do they mean by maximum rate of emission? This actually refers to the maximum or peak intensity. So right now, wavelength lambda max of light for which maximum rate of emission occurs is the wavelength at maximum intensity. For the sun, it's 500 nanometer. But for the star in A that you were studying, the wavelength at maximum intensity is 430 nanometer. You now want to find out the surface temperature of the star in A. In the previous lesson, we learned that there's a relationship between the surface temperature of a star and the wavelength at maximum intensity. That is actually described by Wien's displacement law. So let me write it out here. Wayne's displacement law tells you that the wavelength at maximum intensity is inversely proportional to the surface temperature. You have two stars here, the sun and the star in A. You can form some sort of racial relationship here where you say that the wavelength at maximum intensity of the star to that of the sun is equal to the surface temperature of the sun to that of the star. And you know all the values from the question above to be able to find out the surface temperature of the star. That is what your question wants you to do right now. So the 500 nanometer that you see over here is the wavelength maximum intensity for the sun. The 430 nanometer here is the wavelength maximum intensity for the star. And then the 5800 Kelvin here is the surface temperature of the sun. So from there, you can then work out what is the surface temperature of the star. So you put in all the values. 430 over 500 equals to 5,800 divided by the temperature of the star. Now, your units for your wavelength are in nanometer, but there's actually no need for you to change out the nanometer because you can see from here that 430 nanometer divided by 500 nanometer, the units will cancel each other off. So even if you were to change it to meter, they will still cancel off. There's no need to change, all right? So if you then proceed with solving the equation, you should get the surface temperature of the star at 6,744 Kelvin. You run it up to 2 SF, you should get the answer as 6,700 Kelvin as required by the question. Okay.
So Wien's displacement law allows you to find the surface temperature of a star. As for the last part, use the information in A and B1 to determine the radius of the star. When you're asked to find the radius of a star, there's always one law or equation that you would relate to. This one is actually your Stefan Boltzmann law, which can be summarized by this equation here. Luminosity L is equal to 4 pi sigma r square t power 4. If you were to put in the values that you know, luminosity is 4.8 times 10 power 29. This is something you got from the first part of your question. Then you have 4 pi, and then you have sigma. Sigma is your Stefan Boltzmann constant, 5.67 times 10 power minus 8. You will need to get this value from your data sheet. It's usually the second page of your exam paper. So Stefan Boltzmann constant is 5.67 times 10 power minus 8. Okay. Then after that, the next one is your radius of your star, R square, and the surface temperature of your star. The surface temperature of your star, you already prove it from the question above, that is 6,700 Kelvin. So you put that value in, and then don't forget to raise it to the power of 4. Once you solve the equation, you ought to be able to get the answer as 1.83 times 10 power 10 meter for the radius of the star, or the stellar radius, okay? So before I move on to the next question, Wien's displacement law, just remember, is to find surface temperature of your star. Whereas Stefan Boltzmann law, this one, is used to find radius of your star. Okay? Now, have a look at the worksheet for astronomy and cosmology. There's only a few questions that you can do at this point in time because it's a new addition to your syllabus since 2022. You have a look at page one. This will be March 2022, P42. For the first question, state what is meant by the luminosity of a star. This is something that we just did in the specimen paper. It is the total power of radiation emitted by the star. And then now you look at part B, the luminosity of the sun is 3.83 times 10 power 26 watt. The distance between the earth and the sun is 1.51 times 10 power 11 meter. Calculate the radium flux intensity F of the sun at the earth and give a unit for your answer. So if you're talking about radium flux intensity, you already know that the equation is going to be F equals to L over 4 pi d squared. The luminosity is already given right over here. And then your distance is already given over here. So all you just need to do is to put in the values. 3.83 times 10 power 26 divided by 4 pi divided by 1.51 times 10 power 11 squared. Eventually, your answer will give you 1.34 times 10 power 3. And because radium flux intensity is actually intensity itself, you can actually guess out the unit to be watts per meter squared. So it's 1.34 times 10 power 3 watts per meter squared. Then if you look at part C, use data from B to calculate the mass that is converted into energy every second in the sun. You are talking about mass being converted into energy. You already learned something about this under the nuclear physics chapter where there's an equation that tells you the energy release when you have mass changes. That would be E equals to delta mc squared. Right now, you want the mass converted into energy every second. So it's actually in terms of per unit time. So you will need to divide this equation with time. Then you will get energy over time equals to mass over time times c squared. Now, when you look at energy over time here, it's actually equal to power, which is actually in turn equal to the luminosity. So your value that you would use is 3.83 times 10 power 26. And then you want to find the mass per unit time. Multiply it with the speed of light, 3 times 10 power 8, square the value. Eventually, you will get the answer as 4.26 times 10 power 9 kg. So this is the mass converted into energy every second. Okay.
As for the last part of your question, the radius of the sun is 6.96 .6 times 10 power 8 meter. Show that the temperature T of the surface of the sun is 5,770 Kelvin. You have mentioned of the radius of the sun followed by the temperature at the surface of the sun. You can actually relate them both together by using your Stefan Boltzmann law, which then tells you that your luminosity is equals to 4 pi sigma r squared t power 4. You want to prove that the surface temperature is 5770 Kelvin. The rest of the values are something that you already know. The luminosity is 3.83 times 10 power 26. Then you have 4 pi here. And then your Stefan Boltzmann constant is 5.67 times 10 power minus 8. You get this from the data sheet of your exam paper. And your radius is 6.96 .6 times 10 power 8. Remember to square the value, and then finally you have t raised to the power of 4. If you solve that equation now, you will get the surface temperature is 5.77 times 10 power 3 Kelvin. So you have proven the value here. For the next part, let's have a look at page 5. This would be November 2022 P41. You will notice that this question is actually quite similar to the question that you just did under page 1. So let's have a look at the question now. For part A, state what is meant by the luminosity of a star. It is actually the total power of radiation emitted by the star. And then after that, in part B, a star in the constellation Canis Major is a distance of 8.14 times 10 power 16 meter from the Earth and has a luminosity of 9.86 times 10 power 27 watts. The surface temperature of the star is 9,830 Kelvin. For part one, calculate the radiant flux intensity of the radiation from the star observed from the Earth and give a unit for your answer. So you are finding radiant flux intensity again. You already know that the equation is F equals to L over 4 pi d squared. You again know all the relevant values. This one here is your distance. This one here is your luminosity. So just put all the values in. You will get 9.86 times 10 power 27 divided by 4 pi divided by 8.14 times 10 power 16 and then square the value. Your radiant flux intensity eventually will give you 1.18 times 10 power minus 7. Since this one is really talking about intensity, the unit will be watts per meter squared. Okay. Then if you move on to part two, determine the radius of the star. So since you see mention of radius of the star, there's really only one equation that you've learned so far that talks about the radius of the star. That would be your Stefan Boltzmann equation, which is this one here. So this one is your Stefan Boltzmann equation. You always use this whenever you see mention of radius of the star. So luminosity, you already know the value is 9.86 times 10 power 27. Then you have 4 pi, and then you have the Stefan Boltzmann constant. You get it from your data sheet. And then you have the radius of the star, which you want to find. And your surface temperature is actually 9,830 Kelvin. So put the value in here, and don't forget to raise it by the power of 4. You solve to find out the radius of the star R, you get the answer is 1.22 times 10 power 9 meter. Okay. Now, as for the last part, explain how the surface temperature of a distant star may be determined from the wavelength spectrum of the light from the star. In our earlier lesson, we said that when it comes to the radiation emitted by a star, the radiation comes out as a range of wavelengths. They come out as a wavelength spectrum, such that if this is a graph of intensity versus wavelength, a star would typically have a wavelength spectrum that looks somewhat like this. So all stars will have a wavelength spectrum that follows the same general shape, but they will differ according to the surface temperature of the star itself. So let's say right now for the curve that is being drawn here, this belongs to a reference star whose surface temperature is known. Let's call this surface temperature as T reference. And then we want to find out the surface temperature for another different star. Say the wavelength spectrum of that distant star looks something like this. 
and the surface temperature is what we want to find out. Let's call the surface temperature as T star here. So from the wavelength distribution or the wavelength spectrum, what we're interested to know is the wavelength at peak intensity. For the reference star, the wavelength at peak intensity, let's call it lambda reference. For the star being investigated, let's call the wavelength at peak intensity as wavelength of the star. Now the wavelength at peak intensity is related to the surface temperature by Wien's displacement law. We stated that the wavelength at peak intensity is inversely proportional to the surface temperature. Now from here, we can actually work out some sort of ratio between the reference star and the star being investigated, where we can say that the wavelength at peak intensity of the star being investigated to the wavelength of the reference star is equal to the surface temperature of the reference star to the surface temperature of the star being investigated. So that right now, if we know what are the wavelengths at peak intensity of both star and the temperature of the reference star, we can thus find out the surface temperature of the star being investigated. So if we want to word this as your answer that is worth three marks, the first thing you could probably say is this. The wavelength of peak intensity is determined from the spectrum of star being investigated. And then secondly, the wavelength of peak intensity from object of known temperature is determined. And finally, Wien's displacement law is used, which states that the wavelength of peak intensity is inversely proportional to the temperature. They are actually asking you to use this equation here that was formed from Wien's displacement law to find out the surface temperature of the star that you are investigating. Okay.